it's fall again and it's time to do the fall pruning. So cleaning up the yard so that we can have a nice clean fall and then we'll come through again in the winter to do more pruning and cleaning up for the winter. But for fall, we're going to go ahead and start today. I've got a few tools to use. We're going to use a shearers with the long blade on it. We're going to use a little set of pruners, hand pruners, an actual cheap pair of scissors. And we're going to use this little trowel, double sided, and a kitchen knife, kind of a kind of kitchen knife you'd use to cut bread with so it has a serrated edge on it. And so we're going to get started today right over here. Okay. First of all, I want to get a second bloom out of here or a third bloom in this case, but they're getting kind of floppy. So when it rains, these collapse. So all I have to do, this looks like it's a little too much for that. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors, brush through like that, make sure there's no bees, grab hold of it about four inches up from the base and cut it off just like that. And that's done. And I'll take care of all of them. So this one, there's some bees right in there. So just flick those off. Four inches up, cut it off. It's neat and tidy. And there we've got another one. Do the same thing to this. And that'll give you another bloom this year? Yes. That'll be another bloom within two to three weeks. Okay, these begonias, similar thing. This time of year, you got bees all over them. They get long and leggy. Bees, you can actually, in the Pacific Northwest, you can bring them inside and they'll bloom in your house all summer, but they're getting kind of long. So I'm gonna do the similar treatment to this. Come right through, clip them all off, just like that. There's a weed there, take that out, cut that. This one's running into that one. But I'm going to leave it. So just chopping all that off and clean it up just like that. You know, some people like to leave them long like that. Nothing wrong with that. It's fine. And will the begonias come back again this year? They'll come back again. They're okay um, outside till, in the Pacific Northwest, probably till, oh, the middle part of November at which point you can then dig them up and bring them in your house and they'll bloom in your house all winter long. Okay, and so that's all we have for this part. Since I'm next to this holly right here, I'm going to take this tool. It's looking pretty good in the fall, you know, or even in the spring, it comes out with new, great, um, new growth on it. It's got some little red tips on it, which those are kind of pretty. I'm not real partial to letting them grow with all these uneven edges, so I'm going to come through and just even it out. Chop it off like that. Come through like that, like that, like that. Now if you have somebody come and work on your yard, a lot of times they'll use an electric shearer and they'll shear it all off and they'll leave it just like this. That's the death of your plant basically if you let them do that. Reason being, the outside will continue to grow and the inside will die. So we don't want that to happen. Why will the inside die? Because it doesn't get air and light as well. So how do you prune the inside? So what we want to do, we'll do that in a moment. This, see, I don't want that out there, so I'm going to cut it off. Kind of even it up a little bit. I might come underneath and even that up a little bit. How's it looking? Well, it looks pretty good. Look, looks a lot more round. Okay. Now to answer you about what do you do so they don't die out, we're going to take this pruner and hand prune, selectively hand prune the inside. So I'm just going to take out that. So why am I doing that? So the air and light just Put out a bunch right inside of there. Just go inside and clip out a bunch. So you're, you know, bringing a little bit of air into it. Sometimes you can do this before you prune the outside. That's fine too. 
So how can you tell when you see one of these plants if the inside is dead? All you have to do, if you have a neighborhood where the the, the um, landscapers landscapers come, and a lot of times they'll just shear over the top of it, go to one of those, pull it back like that, and you'll see that it's all dead inside. So that's what you don't want. So you can see with this one, it's not, because it's not been treated that way. It's all still living inside of there. So that's good. So you go through and do a complete job with that. Come back, you come back with your long shears and even it out, and then that'll be good for you. Now, if you want this to be pruned down, say, a foot or two, you don't want to do that until after it freezes two or three times, so sometime in December. Okay, on to the next one. You can clean up your mess as you go, put it in a wheelbarrow, or like me, I'm leaving it behind today. Now this is a mom, it's already bloomed. But in fact, this can bloom again too. So I'm gonna want it to do that. I'm gonna look down inside of here. Look at that, see, you can see there's still some bloom and there's new growth coming up inside of there. Uh -huh. Super great, right? So right now it's sort of pretty. Some people might wanna just leave it like this. But because I wanna get another bloom, I'm gonna do something different to it. So I'm gonna just start taking it down. So I would say I'm taking off 8 to 10 inches there of this. And this is late September. Is that a normal time for doing that, for pruning them back? Yeah, the beginning of September, late September, if it's one that has already bloomed. This one's been in the yard for three years. It was originally a gift, actually from my mother. Mm -hmm. And so I love this one. It's always grew brilliantly um, yellow when it first blooms and then it turns this little bit of a kind of an autumn orangey orangey color which I love. So see we're about halfway done with that. Doesn't take much to do this does it? No a lot of people dread the pruning because they think it's so much work. Well but I've been working now for what eight minutes and take much. You don't even have to be physically fit to do this. So you just want to take it down to 12 to 14 inches tall, get rid of all the dead stuff. Right. Even though the some of the blooms are on there still, but just... Right. So now I'm looking at it even out a little bit. Now, we can use the same uh, technique that we used on the false holly and come through and chop out some of the middle. Just a little bit. Take a little bit out so it can breathe a little bit better. Just a few here and there. So that's just to keep the middle open so it doesn't clog itself and choke itself to death? Exactly. Mums grow like weeds. So anything you trim off is going to grow up again from that point and it's also going to grow out from the stem. Okay? So it might not look real pretty right, right now, you know, but in two weeks from now, you're going to be happy you let it have this second chance for the fall. Okay? So, now it's cleaned up. Nice. Okay. Um, this contorted uh, fig, it's interesting. Um, they tend to get really dense over the summer. You can tell this one's beginning to lose its leaves because they're drying up like that. It looks like it has a little bit of a a little bit of a fungus. You can see that on the back of the leaf, so it probably needs to be sprayed. But a lot of times I'll just go through this and go in there and pinch out a bunch of leaves. Take it all off because we we'll, we'll kind of show something off. And that is the structure of it. So you're not too concerned about the fragility or the how fragile it is. It just kind of are they fairly hardy and fairly strong? Extremely hardy, very strong, profuse um, growth of, of leaves. Now look at the structure. Look at that. It's called a contorted uh, filbert, actually. And see that? It's nice to be able to see that. This one, see, it's kind of hanging down there. I don't want it. I'll just chop it off there. This one, it's a little long. I'll cut it off there, there. 
This one, I don't like it straight up like that. I'll take it way down to there. It's not a big deal. I, these will grow 10 feet tall. Well, I don't want this to get 10 feet tall right there. If you did, you could leave it through that or just keep it trimmed back like that. See, so there's a combination. Of, oh, look at that one's laying way over the top. Well, we don't want that. Okay. Chop it off like that. And then again, go through and randomly pick out leaves. Because again, we're going to bring air to the center so things don't die out. And we also want to be able to see the structure of this thing. They're beautiful. In the winter, people actually stomp by my house and, and stare at this thing. You know, the structure, and they kind of wonder what it is. I think I maybe, I'm not sure, but anyway, they're beautiful. So right now it's a little bit of a tough time of year for this. It's not its best look. It's like the worst look of the season right now, in my opinion. But anyway, so taking that down. And I might come through and take, oh, say 10 more minutes and get leaves off of here. Okay? And so that's what I would do with that. Now, you said there was a fungus on there. Should that be sprayed or anything, or will that be okay? Um, it could be sprayed. Uh -huh. it, it might be worth spraying that. Okay. Okay. Now, every year I grow dahlias because they'll, they bloom... Um, all summer long and so this will continue to bloom 